Now in this video we're going to look at the short method of factoring trinomials such as you know x squared plus 5x plus 6. So the short method is always used when we just have an x squared uh, term and then an x term and then a number. So you know the coefficient of the leading uh, term is 1. So there's page 1, page 2. We're going to look at all positive examples. Page 3 uh, s examples with some negatives and some positives or all negatives, whichever. And page 4, we're going to look at differences of squares and perfect square trinomials. Okay. So page 1, if you could please press pause on the video and multiply x plus 2 times x plus 3. Okay, now I'll do it. So we use, we're use we multiplying two binomials, so we use the double distributive property. Take this x and multiply it against this x and this 3, so we get x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x. Three then we take the 2 and multiply it by this x, and we get plus 2x, and then 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so our answer becomes, of course, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Okay. Now press pause and multiply x plus 4 times x plus 5. Now I'll do it. x times x, x squared, x times 5, 5x, 4 times x, 4x, and 4 times 5, 20. Adding like terms, we get x squared plus 9x plus 20. Okay, now once just to remind you, x. this is an x squared term, this is an x term, this is a number. These are not like terms, so we cannot add them. Similarly here. Okay. What we need to notice is a pattern. We started with multiplying x plus 2 times x plus 3, and we ended up with this. Um, what is 2 plus 3 added together? These numbers added together give us 5, right? And when we multiply these numbers, what do we get? We get 6, right? So what happens when we add these numbers? 5 and 4 add to give 9. And 5 times 4 multiplied to give 20, right? So, if we were to factorize, it's just, so the point is, these two numbers always add to this number, and they multiply to give this number. So they always add to this number and multiply to this number. So if I was to factorize x squared plus 5x plus 6, I would take the 6 and write the pairs of factors for it, 1 times 6, or 2 times 3. Then I simply need to write down my two binomials in this form with x in the corner, then just find two numbers that multiply to give 6 and add to give 5. And of course it is a positive 2 and a positive 3. So my answer would simply be x plus 2 times x plus 3, then I would multiply it and check it. right? So similarly with this one, we would take 20 and write it 1 times 20, 2 times 10, uh, 4 times 5 and, and get all the pairs of factors we can and then say what two numbers multiply to 20 and add to give 9. And you look at your list of pairs here. So it should jump out that, oh well, probably 4 and 5, right? Positive 4, positive 5. If I multiply 4 and 5, I get 9. If I, or I get 20. If I add 4 and 5, I get 9. So the answer would be x plus 4 times x plus 5. Okay. So let's do one where we don't know what the answer is. x squared plus 7x plus 10. We have an x squared term. And it's an x term and a number. This is a trinomial, and we can factorize it with the short method because the first, the x squared term is is one x squared. Okay, the coefficient of that is one. So in any case, we need to use the short method, and short method goes like this: you list the pairs of factors of this number. One times ten. Two times what? Two times what gives ten? Two times five, right? Then you say what two numbers multiply to give ten and add to give 7. So it's got to be, probably use this pair, 2 and 5, right? Positive 2 and positive 5. So that so we write down x plus 2 times x plus 5, and that's the answer. We're done.
because these two numbers add to 7 and these two numbers multiply to 10. Now if you want to check that you can. x times x is x squared, x times 5, 5x, 2 times x, 2x, 2 times 10 is 10, 2 times 5 is 10, so that makes x squared plus 7x plus 10, right? That's the check. So this is the answer, x plus 2 times x plus 5, and this is the check. So what we're doing is undoing multiplication. When we started you know, we know how to multiply. We multiply two binomials and we get this trinomial, x squared plus 5x plus 6. What we're doing here is starting with the trinomial and finishing up with a binomial. So we're going from the product to the two factors, okay? Uh, what, what does that mean? 3 times 4 equals 12, okay? This 12 here is called the product and the 3 and the 4 here are called factors. Okay, so factorizing means taking the product and writing 3 times 4. So if you were asked to factorize, um, you know, 18, you could say 18 is equal to 2 times 9. That's factoring it into two pairs of factors. So factorizing 18, you get 2 times 10. Okay, so ask to factorize x squared plus 19x plus 18 means we must take this product and turn it into a set of factors multiplied by each other. And we use the short method because this is a 1x squared here. So we take this number and we list the pairs of factors of 18. And always remember the first one. 1 times what gives 18? 1 times 18, isn't it? 2 times what? 3 times what? Or 5. And you can even say, okay, 6 times what? So 2 times 9 is 18. 3 times 6 is 18. 6 times 3 is 18, but we've already got that covered, so we don't need this one. So our three pairs of factors are 1 times 18, 2 times 9, and 3 times 6. Now we say, okay, what two numbers add to give 19? Well, 1 and 18 add to give 19, don't they? So the answer is two binomials with an x on, in the left of each binomial and x plus 1 times x plus 18 will work. And you can press pause and check that. Multiply this out and, and to see if it works. Okay, now I'll do it. x times x is x squared x times 18, 18x, 1 times x is 1x, 1 times 18 is 19, so we have x squared plus, whoops, 18, this is 18, x squared plus 19x plus 18, okay, and so this worked out. So this is the answer, x plus 1 times x plus 18, which, by the way, can also be written x plus 18, that's the same as x plus 18 times x plus 1. You can write it this way or this way. Why? Because 3 times 4 is the same thing as 4 times 3, right? So two factors can be switched around. These are just two factors. You've got x plus 1 and x plus 18, and they can be written uh, this way or this way. Just like 3 times 4 is the same as 4 times 3, or 2 times 10 is the same as 10 times 2, isn't it? 20, both times. So you can rearrange factors if you like. Okay? So let's try this one. Press pause on your video and factorize x squared plus 10x plus 21. Now the trick is, we see that we have an x squared term, an x term, and an x squared exactly, an x term, and a number. So we use a short method. So we list the pairs of factors of 21. 1 times 21, and what else? 2 doesn't go into it, but we also have 3 times 7, right? So what two numbers add, what two of these numbers will add to 10? 3 and 7, right? So the answer would be x plus, x plus 3 times x plus 7. Because 3 and 7 add to 10, 3 and 7 multiplied to 21. And you can multiply this out and check it. And then uh, factorize this one, okay? So press pause and try this one. Little brain teaser here. Okay, now, again, short method. 
lists the pairs of factors of 1, 1 times 1, isn't it? What two numbers multiply to 1 and add to give 2? Would it be positive 1 and positive 1? Right? Multiply them, you get 1. Add them together, and you get 2. So the answer is simply x plus 1 times x plus 1. And you can multiply this out and check it. You know, x times x is x squared, x times 1, that's 1x. 1 times x is 1x, 1 times 1 is 1, and add like terms, x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, so this works out. Now, when we have it in this form, um, this times this, both of these things are the same, and we always like to write algebra with as little ink as possible. Okay, so we're going to write this in this form, x plus 1 with a squared on the uh, parenthesis because it's this times this okay and that and that can also be written with the squared which is t is operating touching the parentheses right beside the parentheses okay so just like if you had um, 5 times 5 could be written 5 squared this is the same thing does that make sense okay um, so what about if we had negative numbers back to the first page and uh, multiply these factors out x minus 5 times x plus 3 what does that give us press pause and do that now I'll do it x times x is x squared x times 3 is 3x negative 5 times x is minus 5x Sorry. and negative 5 times 3 is minus 15 when I add like terms, I get x squared minus 2x minus 15. And now multiply out these two factors and see what you get. Press pause and do that. Okay, now I'll do it. x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 minus 4x. Negative 7 times x is minus 7x. Negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. And when I add like terms, negative 4 minus 7. In debt by four dollars, take away seven dollars. You're in debt by eleven dollars, right? Eleven x plus twenty-eight. Okay. So the trick is to notice the pattern once again. Here we started with negative five here and a positive three here. Okay. What happens when we add these two numbers together? Add them together in your head, and you get negative two. What happens when we multiply these two numbers? Negative times positive gives a negative. 5 times 3 is that negative 15? Right? So when we add these numbers, we get this number. When we multiply them, we get this number. Okay? So adding them gives us the coefficient of x. Multiplying them gives us the number at the end, right? Of the trinomial. Similarly here, add negative 7 and negative 4. And of course we get. 11 bad guys, negative 11, 7 bad guys and 4 bad guys is 11 bad guys, right? Multiply negative 7 by negative 4. What's negative times negative? That's positive. 4 times uh, 7, 28. So when we add these numbers, we get this number, the coefficient of x. When we multiply these numbers, we get the number at the end of the trinomial, okay? So, what if we're asked to factorize x squared minus x minus 12. Well, we simply list the pairs of factors of 12. Okay, 1 times 12, 2 times what, 3 times what, 2 times 6 is 12, isn't it? And 3 times 4. And then we find what two numbers multiply to negative 12, but add to give, oh, what's the number here? What is the coefficient of x in this trinomial? Well, I only see 1x there, don't you? So isn't that negative 1x? Negative x is the same as negative 1x, right? So we think, okay, what two numbers multiply to negative 12 and add to give negative 1?
That's interesting. I'll give you a hint. If you use the numbers 3 and 4, because they have a difference of 1. Now, they multiply to negative, so one of them has to be positive and one of them has to be negative, right? Because they multiply to give a negative. So how about, how about if you had a negative, or no, let's see, a positive 3 and a negative 4. Okay, these would add to give negative 1. If you add them, they give negative 1. Multiply them, they give negative 12, right? If you taught negative 3 and a positive 4 works, why does this not work? Okay, this does not work because, look, negative 3 plus 4 gives positive 1, not negative 1. Even though negative 3 times 4 does give us negative 12, that's fine, but they add to give positive 1, not negative 1. So negative 3 and positive 4 obviously will not work. But positive 3 and negative 4 will work. Because when I add these, I do get negative 1. Okay, so in any case, um, the answer would be x plus 3 times x minus 4. So obviously when we check that, x times x is x squared. x times negative 4 minus 4x. 3 times x plus 3x. 3 times negative 4, negative 12, and then we have x squared minus 1x minus 12, which is correct, okay, and um, th that's the answer. Now press pause and try this one, x squared minus 10x plus 9, or may maybe you'll, you could just follow me either, either. but 9 is, the, the pairs of factors of 9 are 1 times 9, and 3 times 3. Anything else? Is that all? Are these all the pairs of factors of 9? They are, aren't they? Okay, so what two numbers multiply to give a positive 9 but add to give a negative 10? Hmm. Two numbers need to add to give 10. Well, look, 1 and 9 adds to 10, doesn't it? So how about how about think about, well, if I had a negative 1 and a negative 9, see, these would add to give negative 10. A negative times negative gives positive. So you might try negative 1 and negative 9. See that? If you add them, 1 bad guy, 9 bad guys gives 10 bad guys. Multiply them, negative times negative gives positive. That would be positive 9, right? So the answer is x minus 1 times x minus 9. And we're done. And that's, that, that will check out. So if you can, you can multiply this out and check it. And just remember, we can also write these things um, either way. You can write it x minus 1 times x minus 9, or x minus 9 times x minus 1. Either way is correct. Okay? This way or this way. So can you do this one? Press pause and try x squared plus x minus 6. And again, we've got to think about the coefficient of x in this. What is the coefficient of x here? Is it 1? Does it just have 1x there, right? Now list the pairs of factors of 6. 1 times what? 2 times what? One times 6, 2 times 3, isn't it? Right? And what two numbers are going to multiply to give negative 6, but then they add to give a positive 1? Okay. I guess my, my brain, I, in my brain, I think what adds to give positive 1? So I've already, you know, got the pairs of factors. So I just look at positive 1 and think, how you know, with putting a negative or positive sign on these numbers, how can I get positive 1 by adding one of the pairs? So I think about the positive 1 part, I guess. And you might look at 3 and 2 because there's a difference of 1 there. So what do you think it could be? Negative 2 and positive 3. Is that going to work? Negative 2 and positive 3, and when you add them, they give positive 1, right? So that will work, x minus 2 times x plus 3. And when we check it, of course, 
we have x squared plus 3x minus 2x minus 6 adds to x squared plus 1x uh, minus 6. Okay? So press pause and try this guy here. Probably a little bit trickier. Okay, um, now you gotta think what what are the pairs of factors of the number one? What two numbers, what two whole numbers multiply to give one? Two whole numbers that multiply to one. Well again, it's one times one, isn't it? Then you have to think, okay, what are what two numbers multiply to one but add to give negative two? Now at this point you've already done the multiplication part. You're thinking, you know, I'm uh, looking at negative two and I'm thinking uh, what two numbers are going to add to give me negative 2 using a positive or negative sign on, on, on these numbers we have. We just have two numbers to work with, 1 and 1. And we can put positive signs or negative signs on, on them. So, well, negative 1 and negative 1, right? Because these will add to, one bad guy and one bad guy adds to two bad guys. But when we multiply them, negative 1 times negative 1, we get positive 1, right? So the answer here is x minus 1 times x minus 1. And of course, that all checks out. And just remember, in your homework, once again, you have to write your answer with as little ink as possible. So can you remember, how, how, how do you think we could write x minus 1 times x minus 1? Right? Just remember, if you had, um, you know, whatever, a times a, that can be written in parentheses a squared, for example, or a squared, or, or just obviously a squared and so on. But the point is parentheses times parentheses gives the parentheses whatever's in there squared, right? So this could also be written x minus 1 all squared, couldn't it? Right? Oops. In parentheses. Okay. Okay, we just need to look out for um, difference of squares examples, x squared minus 4. And when we see this, it does not look like a short method because there are only two terms. But what we need to know how to do is to write it this way, x squared plus 0x minus 4. Now it has three terms. See that? An x squared term, an x term, and a number. Because look, 0x, what's that equal to? Write down what 0x is equal to. What is 0 times x equal to? Well, it's equal to 0, isn't it? I mean, I can add 0 onto this expression if I want. It's not going to change the value. So I can rewrite it like this. And the reason I rewrite it like that is because I can now perform the short method on it and get the answer. So get and factorize it. And factorize it. Okay. So what are the pairs of factors of 4? Well, 1 times 4 and 2 times 2, right? Now, what two numbers are going to add to give 0? So we need two numbers multiplied to give negative 4, and then they add to give 0. Now, you've just de kind of dealt with the multiplication, but think in your brain, you know, what two numbers are going to add to give 0? If I could put positives or negatives on any of these numbers here, how could I make the two numbers add to 0? How about positive 2 and negative 2? Do they add to 0? Right? So this thing can be factorized as x, you know, plus 2 times x minus 2. So the whole x squared minus 4 becomes x plus 2 times x minus 2. And when we check that, it works out. Because look, x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 minus 2x. Two, 2 times x plus 2x. Two, 2 times negative 2 is minus 4. And so the negative 2x plus the 2x makes 0, or 0x. Zero so we get x squared minus 4, okay? So that worked out. So press pause on the video and do the same thing for x squared minus 49.
Okay, x squared minus 49 does not have a middle term. It just has an x squared term and a number, but it doesn't have an x term. But if we want, we can create an x squared term. x squared plus 0x minus 49, there it is, 0x. And we know that 0x is the same thing as 0. So I can put that in there and it doesn't change the value, just changes what, what it looks like and now it'll, this will help me to solve using the short method. Okay, So um, list the pairs of factors of 49. 1 times 49, 7 times 7, right? And what two numbers will now add to give 0? They multiply to negative 49 and they add to give 0. Again, you can put positives or negatives on the 1 or, or the 49. Positives or negatives on the on the 7s as well, right? So, positive 7 and negative 7. Is that going to work? Yep. x minus 7 times x plus 7. And that's the answer. Of course, you could also write it x plus 7 times x minus 7. This way or this way, whichever you prefer. Okay, and um, so or this or this, and then multiply one of them out just to check to see if you got the right answer. Okay. Um, just to show you one that comes up all the time. Next, x squared minus one. X squared minus one can be written x squared plus zero x minus one, can't it? Now press pause and factorize that. And we can write that, we, we can list the pairs of factors of 1, well just 1 times 1. Then find two numbers that multiply to negative 1 and add to 0. So, what do you think? use positives or negative signs on these numbers and we get positive one and negative one, right? So this ends up being, you know, x plus one times x minus one or the other way around. And you can multiply this out and check it, okay? Now, just to remind you, the all these examples we did so far were called difference of squares. Okay, difference of squares, what does that mean? Um, this x squared minus 4 is the same thing as x squared minus 2 squared, okay? It's a difference of squared numbers. It's a difference of squares. We're going to see these later on. And x squared minus 49 can also be written x squared minus 7 squared. So that's a difference of squared numbers. Just like x squared minus 1 can also be written x squared minus 1 squared a difference of squared numbers. So that's why these are called differences of, these are all called, you know, a difference of squares. These uh, binomials here, x squared minus 4, x squared minus 49. Okay. Now the perfect squared trinomials, we saw them already, and you can try and factorize this again. We just did it earlier. x squared plus 2x plus 1. So press pause in the video and try that. Okay, now I'll do it. You should have got x plus 1 times x plus 1. And this can then be written, perfect square trinomial means that it can be written in this form. So, all, something all squared, x plus 1 all squared. So we did that one earlier. x squared minus 6x plus 9. Factorize that one. So we just list the pairs of factors of 9. 1 times 9 or... 3 times 3. Now find two numbers that add to give negative 6. What two numbers add to give negative 6? And you can put positives or negatives on, on any of these, right? And again, you, you, of course, you either use 1 and 9 or 3 and 3. And we know 3 and 3 adds to 6, so it should be obvious we use 3 and 3 somehow. And you might need negatives, of course. How about a couple of negative threes? These would add three bad guys and three bad guys gives us six bad guys. Three neg negative three plus a negative three gives a negative six. And then if I multiply them, 
Negative times negative is positive. 3 times 3 is 9. So these two numbers multiply to 9 and add to give negative 6. So this becomes x minus 3 times x minus 3, which can be written because they're the, exactly the same thing multiplied by each other. They can be written um, x minus 3, you know, all squared, right? x minus 3 all squared. Okay, so uh, press pause and try this one x squared minus 10x plus 25. So press pause and I'm going to do it in three seconds. Three, two, one. Okay, 25 is 1 times 25 or 5 times 5. Two numbers that add to give negative 10. Now I need to find two, number, two, one, two pairs of numbers that add to give negative 10. 5 and 5 is 10, so a negative 5 and a negative 5, right? And I can write that x minus 5 times x minus 5. And it's a perfect square trinomial because these two things are the same. So that can be rewritten as x minus 5 all squared. And it should be written like this in your final answer because it takes up less ink. Okay. So again, these are all perfect square trinomials are these, these guys here, the, these trinomials that factorize to be something all, a binomial all squared. Okay. So this is a perfect square trinomial because it factorized to be a binomial all squared.